Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of my affordable blushes from least to most favorite. If you aren't familiar, I do have a whole ranking series here on my channel where I will rank different brands, different types of products, all of that good stuff. Of course, this series was inspired by my friend Kelsey Brianna J here on YouTube. She's the first person that I personally ever saw do any sort of rankings video, so I wanted to give her credit for that. Anyways, if you would like to see me rank my blushes then just keep watching so a couple of weeks ago on my channel I posted a blush collection video where I showed you all of my blushes and you guys seem to really enjoy when I actually ranked my bronzers so I am going to be ranking my blushes but I did break it up between affordable and high-end just because for me somebody who takes my rankings very seriously I think that's the best way to do it it's easier for me to actually get into detail about why I placed what where whereas if I did my whole collection there would be so many that would fall in the middle that I really wouldn't know which one is better or how I would rank them. So I feel like it's more accurate if I can break them up between affordable and high end. That being said though, affordable blushes are honestly amazing. A lot of these are definitely comparable, if not better, than some of my high-end blushes. So don't let the word affordable fool you. I feel like it's pretty tough to mess up a blush. Even looking at this entire drugstore collection that I have of blushes, all of them are really fantastic. I really like them. I also decided to organize them by formula. So obviously if I have five of the same formula, I'm not going to rank all five of those colors. I gave each place based on formula. Since I had fewer affordable blushes, I also mixed in cream formulas as well as blush dedicated palettes. So if I had a drugstore or affordable palette that was completely all blushes, then I threw them in here as well. So I have 20 different options and rankings that I am going to be doing. Just a little warning, if you hear like some type of noise in the background, I accidentally put my mic too close to my lens so you can hear it auto-focusing rookie mistake it was kind of annoying for me editing and it'll probably be annoying for you watching but like pretend it doesn't exist okay so let's get started with number 20 and I would say of all of these this is probably the only item that I can truly say I'm not really a fan of and that is the covergirl cream blush and flush and it's not bad but I found that this just completely disappeared on my cheek I'm not sure if it's this color in particular but I just did not have very good luck with it I keep it in my collection because I do want to try it a few more times before I give it up like I feel like this might be good with a tinted moisturizer kind of look but for the most part I I haven't had luck with this. I wasn't too crazy about the way that it sat on my skin because it kind of made the foundation disappear. The color itself also disappeared. So was not a fan of this. This is why this is number 20. Number 19, and I'm surprised this ranked so low, but I just feel like I have so many other formulas like this that I much prefer. And this is the ColourPop Blush Sticks. I don't think this is a bad stick at all. I have mine in the shade 25.8. It's just I have so much better more emollient and blendable formulas that this is just not something that I see myself reaching for very often. That being said, this formula is way better than the highlighter stick formula version of this if you ask me. However, I'm really just not too big of a fan of this. I don't see myself using it too frequently and I'm not really tempted to go and buy more colors of this formula. So that's why this is ranking number 19. It gets the job done. It does work. I just much rather would prefer to buy like my milk makeup cream blushes. I really enjoy those. Number 18. This is definitely where I start saying the formulas of these are not bad at all but I picked the bourgeois blushes. I just don't find myself reaching for them very often. I did go through a phase where I really really enjoy these but for me I just don't find myself reaching for them quite as often anymore. I bought these when I went to Spain this summer. I believe these are a European brand. They don't sell them in the US uh, but you can get them on like Amazon and this is a like a duo blush. This one I'm not too big of a fan of. It has like a sheen to it that I find a little bit unflattering on the face so I really don't like that color. One that I do like a lot is Rose Blossom. This is a really pretty neutral color. The formula of this is not bad at all and I really liked it over my powder foundation for everyday work days but for the most part I just feel like I have formulas that I much prefer over this and this does not last 
over time. I find that these blushes fade really quickly. Moving on to 17. This came in a boxy charm a couple of years ago and I thought it was a really nice blush. I looked into purchasing a couple other colors but ultimately did not. I believe this ran around $10. This is from Note and Note is actually a UK brand. It was available on Ulta for a short amount of time and they did actually sell out I remember because this is a good formula but right now it's no longer on the Ulta website and this is in the shade Desert Rose and this is a very a nice formula. I find it to be a little bit too pigmented for my taste, which is why it's ranking where it's ranking, but blendability on it is really good and the color of this is really good. Honestly, if you can easily get your hands on this for the more affordable price that it is, I would recommend it. I'm not really attracted to the packaging. I think it's a bit chunky, but it's not a bad formula at all. But if I have to go through the trouble of ordering it from a UK site, I'm just not going to do it. This is the kind of blush that I would pick up if it's in front of my face and I see the price. Moving on to number 16, I really like these. Don't let the ranking fool you. They just aren't the best formula, but they're very good for the price and what you're getting. And these are the Morphe 8 Pan Blush Palettes. When I was looking online, I think they're getting rid of these. You can get these for like 50% off if they're still in stock at the point that I get this up. These are very attractive to me. I love a good blush palette. So this is the 8W Warm, and then I also have the 8C, which is the Cool. And these are not a bad formula at all. I don't think they're the most blendable if I were to compare it to other blushes in my collection, but the amount of variety that you get as far as finishes, undertones, textures, all that good stuff, you have a lot here and these certainly get the job done. They get that pink on your cheek. You look alive again. So they do what they're supposed to do. They're not bad at all. They're just not the best, but I highly recommend this for a blush lover. Whatever undertone you prefer, I'm not going to tell you not to get this because honestly, before I had all of the amazing blushes that I had, I definitely would have reached for this a lot more because it has so many colors and it goes on the cheek perfectly. So I like those a lot. Number 15 is another cream blush product. Personally, I haven't found a blush liquid formula that's completely knocked my socks off. This is from Milani and this is in the shade Pink Flirt. This is very, very sheer, but I do like the finish that it gives on my cheek. It instantly plumps my cheek and I more so prefer this for that reason as opposed to the color. I'm not sure if other colors are going to be more pigmented, but if you have anything deeper than a light skin tone, I don't see this specific color showing up on you. I do like the texture and consistency and I thought it lasted decent on my skin and it's just an easy throw on product for the summer. I like it. I don't love it. I don't see myself purchasing more colors of this. Honestly, 16 is kind of high. Now that I'm looking at this, I prefer some of the other blushes that I just talked about kind of more than this. So I would push this back, honestly, if everything wasn't set in stone. Moving on to number 14, I have the Kaleidos Lo-Fi Duo Blushers. These actually just released. I've had them for a couple of weeks now. Right now, I'm actually wearing the Low Peach, the Lo-Fi peach so I have this all over my cheeks and I like these a lot. I don't love them. I think that they are very light so if you have again a deeper skin tone than myself, I just itch myself and not mine. <laughs> okay anyways, if you have a deeper skin tone than myself, you probably aren't going to like this one. The Lo-Fi Rose especially is even a bit light for me. I don't find the shimmer formula to be that special. Honestly, I find it to be more unflattering than anything because it's looks horrible all over your cheek but also it it's not that great of highlighter. So I think the bottom powder product is a really nice formula, very pretty color. The top of the product is what kind of fails for me. And these aren't bad at all and I love the packaging. I think they are beautiful, but the color range on this isn't very good. And I think they could work on that shimmery formula. Moving on to number 13. This is also a newer product in my collection. This is from BH Cosmetics. And this is the Bellini blush palette. This is the first blush item that I have ever purchased from BH and uh, it is so cute you guys. That is where BH always gets me and I thought I was going to love this. I heard very good things about their blushes especially for the price because they are so affordable. Honestly I felt like every single color in here just about looked the same on my cheek with the exception of these two because this one is obviously 
exceptionally brighter than the rest and this one is much more natural and the formula was good it was definitely an average formula there was nothing special about it but for the price and how pretty the presentation was I definitely gave it some points up but where I was not feeling was the fact that all of these are kind of the same color and they don't blend out the easiest so if you apply too much at once and you get a circle on your face you do have to put in a little bit of extra work to blend it out so that your application looks seamless so these aren't the greatest formula I mean if you're really into these colors I'm not going to tell you not to buy it because it's good for the price but it's just not the best. Moving on to number 12, I have the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush Palette. I believe they're trying to phase this out. This was really popular at one point and I really enjoy this blush palette. I bought this when I was first getting into blush and truly it's a very nice palette. The formula is decent. I don't think it's anything exceptional but it does the job for sure. The colors aren't overly pigmented, which I really like because sometimes if you find a blush that's too pigmented, that's how you get that strong dot on your cheek and you can't really blend it out as well. I don't have this, so if you have a heavy hand, this is a good way to go about it. And also there's a really nice range of colors in here. So I find the formula in here to do what it's supposed to do. I really enjoy the colors and finishes that this gives me. And so if you are starting off your blush collection, honestly, I think this is a great way to start. You have a lot of colors, the formula is good, and you have have a lot of options as far as texture goes as well. So I really do enjoy this one. I don't use it as much just because I have so many blushes, but I know back in the day if I had had this palette this would have been used like crazy. Number 11 are these Color Icon blushes from Wet n Wild. For the longest time, I would swear by these blushes. As I was looking online, it seems that they have repackaged these into just circular pans, which I much prefer because this is the cheapest packaging ever. But I always thought that the quality of the blush did not match the quality of the packaging, which made it okay for me because the product is all that matters. My favorite shade is Mellow Wine. I just think this is a really great peachy formula. I also have apricot in the middle which has a bit of a sheen. I'm not too crazy about this shade but for the most part these are really great blushes. They were like three dollars when I bought them. They have a really gorgeous range of colors and as I've been saying they certainly get the job done. They blend out very easily. They're not too pigmented and these are a solid blush formula and for the price that makes it even better. If you're looking for a really great affordable blush option, I do recommend these. Number 10, this isn't a super new product to my collection, but as far as drugstore blushes go, this is still one that I'm trying to get to know and this is the Primer Infused Blush from e.l.f. Honestly, I find the quality of this to be very high end. I mean, the packaging's a little bit chibi, but for what you pay, it's very, very nice. I have mine in the shade Always Rosy, and I think why I love this one so much is the shade itself. It's just so wearable and so versatile, and the product itself feels very, very creamy. Like I said, it feels like a high end blush product. You could definitely put a high end label on this, and I wouldn't suggest otherwise. So I really like this blush. I think it stays on a long time, it blends out beautifully, and there's not too many ways that I can use to describe blushes. This is a formula that I would enjoy getting more colors of and they have a very good range of these as well. So again, a really great affordable blush to look into. Moving on to number nine, I have collected a few of these and these are from Flower Beauty. I'm sad to see that they were taken away from Ulta's in stores because I really like Flower Beauty. I think they come up with some really great and gorgeous products that feel and look high end. And this is another one. So the reason why it's ranking at number eight nine though is because I don't love all the colors and all the textures in the line. For example, Warm Hibiscus has a bit of a gold sheen to it. I find that it almost looks a bit unflattering on the cheek. I don't like their sheen finish, but if we're talking their matte finish, I think they do a good job with the formula. I can feel that these are a more drugstore formula, but they do blend out beautifully. You can't tell that they're a drugstore if you blend them out and you work with them a little bit. I enjoy the color range that they have. They're very smooth, very creamy, and a nice blush formula to look into. And they're really pretty. Just the whole marketing and all of this. They did a very nice job with this. It's just I love some of the colors and not all of the colors. Number eight is a very similar looking blush to the ones that I just showed you, but these are a bit better. I think they're a bit more blendable. And this is the Mulani Flower Blush. They're called powder blushes. This is in the shade Romantic Rose and I love this color also. If you're looking for that great everyday blush, Romantic Rose from Milani is beautiful. The only complaint I have about this is I wish it would last 
just a bit longer on the cheek but you know if you have a good long lasting foundation usually that will help this one hold up i really like how creamy and blendable and lightweight this is and it's just an overall really nice luxurious blush i think milani does a great job as far as making an affordable product feel like a little bit more of a luxury experience. Milani is definitely the luxe of the drugstore and they have killer blush formulas and this one in their line is also very nice. Number seven is going back to Flower Beauty and these are the Color Bomb blush products. So these I think of what I've tried are the best cream or liquid formula that you can get from the drugstore by far. As I stated earlier, I don't really care for the cream or liquid formulas that I find at the drugstore, but this one is actually decent. Certain occasions, I have had this pull up my foundation a little bit, but for the most part, these are very, very good. I don't really struggle with that most of the time. I think they have a lot of great colors, and if you're looking into a good liquid blush, for the summer that is affordable. I enjoy these. I really like the colors. You can build up the pigmentation on them. You can take them away. They sit down pretty well also. So these are definitely a solid liquid formula that I enjoy. I much prefer cream blushes that are kind of in a pot that I can stick my beauty blender into. I feel like with that, I could get a much more even application, which is why I don't love these, but they're still good. Number six is the Butter Blush Formula from Physicians Formula. Now my first kind of venture into this formula is with this Physicians Formula and Whaley palette, which by the way is an incredible palette. I highly recommend it. And there are two of the Butter Blush formula in here. We have Apricot and then we have Wildflower. First of all, she chose very lovely colors to put in this palette. This is a really beautiful formula, you guys. So creamy, so buttery, not too pigmented, and then just added the most natural flush. And that more so has to do with the colors that are in this palette. But I really have been enjoying the formula of these blushes a lot. The experience of using them are great. They smell really nice and they just apply so nice and evenly to the skin. So I cannot complain about this formula at all. The next blush formula that I have to talk about are the ColourPop Press Powder blushes. Now the ones that I have were all limited edition. I have a couple of pans back in my makeup collection. So I have two also from the Mulan collection and three from the Peaches collection. What I will say is though, they've come out with so many different blushes that I've noticed there are some inconsistencies in the formula. They've just launched so many that not every single blush you're going to get is great, but the ones that I do have, I really do enjoy. I love the ones from the Peach collection. I do find that within the Peach collection, some have more pigmentation than others, some are a little bit more powdery, and that's kind of that inconsistency that I'm talking about. But for the most part, they blend out very easily on the cheeks, and their range in general just has so many different choices. You're not gonna have any trouble finding a blush color that you really like, and I haven't had any complaints really about the quality also. So I think what is really pushing these to the top is that you're gonna find a color that you like, you're gonna find a finish that you like within their range because they have so much, and I haven't been disappointed with a blush from them yet. Number four is another Milani formula and that is the baked blush formula. Now something that really kicked Milani into the game was the Luminoso blush and for good reason. This is a stunning blush you guys. Luminoso is a great way to start in their line. We also have Berry Amore. I really like this one for more neutral kind of everyday cheeks. Not every color is a hit again. I have this one called Bella Bellini. This one I don't really care too much for the shimmer in it. I find it to be a bit too shimmery but if you find that happy medium formula these are going to bring so much life to your cheek because they do have a bit of a sheen and a glow to them that mixes flawlessly into your highlighter and these are a very popular blush formula for a reason if you're into drugstore makeup everybody's really tried these big blushes from milani and again a little bit more of a luxurious experience with their products so i really enjoy their baked blushes because i do enjoy a shimmery blush on my cheek and i feel like these do a good job of subtly giving you some glow without going too overboard if you get the right colors. Number three, this is unbelievable that this is ranking so high because it is so affordable and these are the Essence Satin Touch blushes and they only have two shades. So the range is limited, but these are only $2.99 each. They're a very pretty and simple blush formula. The colors aren't too crazy so that you don't have a lot of options. Both of the colors that they have, Satin Love and Satin Coral, 
They are just both really neutral everyday blushes, which I think makes them so approachable for me. I find these very easy to reach for because I know that the formula is going to be something that I like. I know that the color is going to be something that I like. These are a satin finish, so they're not completely flat. You're going to see a little bit of life given to your cheek, but not overly so. They're less shiny than the Milani blushes that I just showed you, but they're not a complete matte, which I think makes them look very healthy on the cheek. And I just love how natural the colors are. And for $2.99, you can't beat it. Moving on to number two, I have pulled out these Burt's Bees blushes. I just love the texture and consistency of these blushes. They are a completely matte formula. But they are so stunning. They blend so seamlessly onto the cheeks. I have four shades, but my favorite two are Shy Pink because I like a nice wearable everyday bright pink cheek. And then we also have Bare Peach. So if I'm going a little bit more warm or a little bit more peachy, I love this one equally as much. The one that was kind of made popular from Kathleen Lights was Toasted Cinnamon. A lot of you guys really seem to enjoy this one. This was a bit too warm and brown on me for my undertone. I thought it looked a bit odd on me, but if you really like those warm, toasty, cinnamony kind of colors, you will really like this. There also is a color for deeper skin tones now called Velvet Wine. I obviously haven't really dug into this because it's not going to be as flattering for my skin tone, but the formula on these are really good, very blendable. I really like the natural colors that they have, and I just find myself reaching for these a lot, which is why I'm ranking them at number two because I just know I have a pink option and a peach option, and that's all I need, and I always like the way that they apply and look on the cheek. Finally, moving on to number one. When I was ranking these, I was so surprised this came in at number one, but again, I wasn't because these are so bomb and I need to get more colors because I only have one, but this is the best blush formula I have ever tried at the drugstore, and this is the Almay Healthy Hue Blush. I love this because I haven't found a drugstore formula quite like this. Now, the packaging is a little cheap, but the quality of this blush is beautiful. If you don't like a blush with a sheen, you're not going to like this blush, but this really gives you a healthy finish on the cheek. It gives a natural sheen that's not going to be unflattering on, say, mature skin tones, but it just gives you enough to really kind of hit the light and just make your skin look younger and plumper and alive. And I have the shade Nearly Nude. I absolutely love this. You kind of see that sheen in the pan here, but not only is this such a beautiful and approachable color, it also gives you a nice sheen. It blends effortlessly onto the cheek. I'll show you, even though I'm already wearing another blush. I just, I love this one so much, you guys. It's so pretty. I don't have a mirror, so I'm just blindly putting this on, but oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite blushes, and I purchased this not thinking anything of it. I was like, huh, never seen that before. Don't really use all May, but this really did knock my socks off. All right, you guys, that is all I have to rank as far as my affordable blushes go. Don't worry, I will be doing my high end. I actually have them sitting on my floor all lined up. I already know how I'm ranking them, so I will get that video up for you, if not this week, next week. So it is coming also. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any favorite affordable blushes, don't be afraid to comment them down below. We can help each other. You can help me. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, already I would love it if you would take the time to do so that would be much appreciated and I hope you guys are doing well I hope you're staying safe and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one